So we're into the low, into the early 70s here. All right, 1972, AVMA House of Delegates votes to a credit training programs for animal technicians. So that's the start of accreditation of the various programs. Committee on accreditation, oops, too, too fast. <laughs> Committee on accreditation of training for animal technicians is formed. So KTAP was formed at that time. That's a, that was an AVMA committee. There is still a similar committee um, through AVMA. It's just got a different name at this point, but they basically govern and accredit um, the various veterinary technician, veterinary technology programs. Now, <laughs> okay, so agricultural faculty in 1972, which was the time that uh, I started here. And I know there's a couple of my colleagues online here. 1973, hopefully Kathy's there with you, Mel. I think that's a picture of Kathy Chambliss. Mel Chambliss, is, I saw his picture up there before and he retired a little while ago, a couple of years ago from SUNY Alfred in the veterinary technology program, which he started. Okay, in 73, the first two programs are accredited by the AVMA, but Delhi is not one of them. Okay, and Association of Animal Technician Educators was formed that year. Next, please. <clears throat> okay, here the AVMA proposed registration but not licensure of animal technicians. And that's something that now is being debated with the veterinary technician organizations, NAVTA, NISAT, and so on, which actually we'll do later on. And uh, something we all enjoyed doing when we got the opportunity is a rectal. So that's Dr. Collins um, doing a rectal exam there on a cow, probably down at the farm. Although that picture may have, I'm not sure where that was taken. That doesn't look like the, the present college farm, but it could have been. Okay, next please. Oh, okay. Some faculty, I know uh, Dave Curry, was a technical assistant here. He graduated from the program in 72 and started. And he was helping in labs um, all the time uh, I was here as a student. Next. Okay, that's the entire faculty from, I think this one's 1973 now. Some new notable individuals. Let's see it, Dr. McBride over in the right-hand page on the left side. Um, I don't know whether we've seen Dr. Loveless before. I don't think so. Dr. Westbrook. Um, Hilson, I can't see his first name, <laughs> but he was in the vet tech program. Mike Seppi's over here. Um, and some of the already notable ones that we've mentioned. And Manley Schultz looks more like Manley in that picture. All right, so in 1974, Eileen Davitt, now Eileen Abbott Jobson graduated from the program and she's been working as a LVT since then. Hi, Eileen. Hello, Ellen. <laughs> she, I, has, I know for a while, <clears throat> I used to run into her at NISAP meetings. And so she was active in NISAP. She served on our um, college program advisory board for a while. She was on at least one of our AVMA accreditation teams. Um, she's done a lot with excuse me, wildlife rehabilitation. And the one time you helped me tour, you went to the facility where they were doing uh, human animal bond with the children. Wasn't that something you've also been involved in? Uh, green chimneys, green chimneys in Brewster, New York. That's it. Okay. So anyhow, it's time for Eileen to give a little bit of a perspective on, well, her perspective on the program and what it meant to her life. Wow, <laughs> there's so much um, after all these years and Linda did a great job just um, reviewing what, what things were like and probably the early 70s may not have been that different from her experiences in the 60s, although there were different buildings and things like that. And I would probably have to say, if I had to just think of how my Delhi experience um, helped me in my career. The, the breadth of the education that we received was phenomenal. Uh, the fact that the lab animal science was a part of the animal program 
I never even realized how valuable that would have been to me, you know, back then, but getting out and working, um, it was, it was something that I relied on time and again, especially going into a small animal practice where, you know, we would see exotics, you know, pocket pets and things like that. Um, and you had shown the picture of uh, Professor Baker. And then to this day, I, I, I teach people that are helping hold rabbits for me the, you know, how to hypnotize the rabbit by massaging the masseter muscles and just putting them in that sleep state so that you can safely do a pedicure or whatever. Um, but that was just uh, one example of the multitude of things that have helped me over the years. What brought me to Delhi was probably when I was in high school, I had a meeting with a guidance counselor. And at that time, I really wasn't sure, you know, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to go to college for. Um, the field was wide open. And the only thing that I told my guidance counselor at the time was, I, I just, I don't think I want to sit at a desk behind a typewriter all day. You know, I really, you know, I need to do something more. I, I really like animals. And um, the guidance counselor had one of those brochures and said, well, you know, why don't, why don't you take a look at this? You know, there's a, a new program that's available, you know, that deals with animals. And, and that was it. You know, I never thought of applying to any other college or pursuing any other career, I thought, okay, let's see what this is all about. So, and from there, it just all unfolded. Uh, the friendships that I made still to this day, aside from the academics and the education, the friendships that I made was also a huge part of my Delhi experience. And every year we still get together for a little mini reunion. We rent a house somewhere, either in the Catskills or the Adirondacks or the Poconos. And we just recall our, our Delhi days. That's what we do. There's about nine or 10 of us that we get together every year. And every fifth year, we do go back to Delhi. So on the years that end in a four and a nine, we know that we're gonna be back in Delhi. Um, and I would have to say, there's just, I mean, there's too many things to talk about in terms of what it was like then. Um, and it was a transition time. You know, I graduated as an animal health technician uh, we weren't licensed at the time that I graduated. And I do remember, and I have great respect for all of the technicians that kind of took the movement forward to Albany, to the state, um, that really just kind of kept up the pressure, you know, to get some recognition as a, as a licensed professional. And I believe it was in 1978, we had an opportunity to take a written exam and if we passed the written exam, we then were allowed to go on to Cornell University to the veterinary school and take a two day practical exam. And if we passed all that, then we, you know, that made us licensed. <laughs> so it was a lot to go through, but um, I have to credit the education that I got at Delhi that allowed me to not only be successful in the passing the written exam, but then to go to Cornell and to take a two day practical exam with the, at the veterinary college, um, it was because of everything that I learned at Delhi that kind of got me through that. And to this day, um, I am so fortunate that I have absolutely loved my profession. And I have to also mention what I learned at Delhi, it was always stressed the professionalism, the degree of professionalism, maintaining professionalism, no matter the circumstances, um, you know, you don't talk about other people or, you know, say anything bad about any of your coworkers or bosses. And it's just so true because it doesn't reflect well on an individual or, you know, certainly as the profession, you know, if you're, if you're caught out in public, you know, saying negative, bad things about people. Um, and being flexible, that was the other thing that I learned. I mean, over the years, and I've worked with so many different people and so many different veterinarians and everyone comes from a different place in their education, you know, depending on where they went to school. So to remain flexible has just been paramount in an ability to uh, not only get along with everybody, but to continue learning as well. Because I would have to say there has been something that I have learned from every single other uh, veterinarian or technician that I've worked with, everybody has brought something to the table. 
So yes, you know, back in the 70s when I first was working as a technician, you know, we did all of our in-house laboratory tests. We did our own CBCs, you know, differentials. Yes, we can still make a decent blood smear, can still differentiate a regenerative versus a non-regenerative anemia. You know, um, yes, I can do a urinalysis and identify and describe accurately everything I'm seeing as a sediment, but everything now goes to the lab. But it's been an interesting transition from being very confident in doing all of those things. And now, you know, it's all sent to the lab or it's all done, you know, by machines. And I remember when we were first getting automated equipment, you know, um, my boss would say, you know, I, I kind of trust the technicians, what they're seeing and describing. I don't know about these machines. <laughs> so for a while, we would have to pair our findings and descriptions with what we were seeing and pair it out with a sample to the lab. Um, and then he wanted to make sure, you know, that these, that these automated machines were giving the same information as, as what he knew that as trained technicians from Delhi, mind you, I have to say, they were very particular about hiring uh, Delhi graduates back in the 70s. Um, and that's not to diminish the wonderful programs that are available now. You know, there's so many now throughout the country, um, but Delhi techs were very well sought after. And, um, and again, I just think all those that fought and brought the movement forward to Albany to be recognized as licensed very veterinary technicians. I just have the utmost regard and respect for them. Uh, one of my classmates, um, well, a couple of them that weren't able to be here, they did want me to just share something. Um, and as I said, we still meet every year. You know, we get together. In fact, it's usually Columbus Day weekend when we get together and have our little Delhi reunion group. But one of my friends wrote, <clears throat> reflecting on the choice to attend SUNY Delhi, quote, to study animals, made a profound difference in my life and my future. Not only was it a dream education, Delhi's veterinary science program provided incredible opportunities. I was hired immediately after graduation, and in the span of, of over four decades, I went from head technician with each practice to owning my own veterinary purchasing company to working in the pharmaceutical industry to this day. So the confidence that this one uh, classmate of mine had, um, and plus, you know, she has to credit herself. She had some personal drive there, but she was able to advance her career to the point where she owned her own veterinary uh, purchasing company. Um, another one went straight into pharmacy laboratory work. Another friend of mine from Pennsylvania had moved out to California, worked in veterinary hospitals, went into the human pharmacy end of things. She's returned to Pennsylvania um, and stayed with the human pharmacy field. Um, another one of our classmates uh, went from working in the veterinary hospital in central New York to moving to Vermont and working in the FDA in the whole meat processing production inspection. Um, and then another classmate, she took her veterinary technology program as far as she could and just wanted more personal um, growth. She went on to become a dentist and had her own practice in uh, maxillooral facial surgery. So every single one of these, we've kind of all grown in different directions, but our, our foundation at Delhi, and we all feel the same, and I can speak for them because we talk about it every year when we get together, we just had um, a, an excellent education and we're just all very grateful. And uh, thank you, Alan, you did such a good job putting these yearbooks together and all these pictures and reminiscing and in the we're not done yet, I might screw up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's been great. Um, thank you very much for having me. I've enjoyed it. And, and you know, wildlife, that's the other thing that I never even touched upon. You know, I'm, I am fortunate to work in a practice where uh, my boss, you know, he likes to volunteer and take care of wildlife. By law, you can't own wildlife, so we can't really charge anybody for it. But, um, you know, we do end up seeing, you name it, I've probably seen it, handled it, dealt with it, x-rayed it, um, <laughs> treated it, um, fed it, put a splint on it. Um, a lot of birds, a lot of birds, birds of prey, 
deer, rabbits, raccoons. We have to be careful with the vector species uh, and animals, and I am rabies vaccinated. Um, bats, uh, just everything. If it, if it can make it to the practice, you know, we, we do try and, and help it. And if it can be repaired, we repair it. And then we are very, very grateful for all the rehabbers out there who take over, you know, the nurturing work to be able to get these animals back out into the wild. Um, but that's been a great, um, and I really, I have to think back, you know, some of the lab animal science classes, you know, getting over some maybe fear of handling mice and rats and things like that. It's come in very handy, you know, when you're dealing with wildlife too. So uh, thanks again, Alan. This has been really good. Now, just one quick thing, Eileen, you didn't mention, you didn't mention Stuart. Oh, yes. Yes. Who graduated from the hotel restaurant management. Yes. I met my husband at Dell. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. I thought this was about my experience. <laughs> well. Yeah. well, after 40 years, that has to be an experience. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, yes, I met my husband at Dell High, but that had nothing to do with the curriculum, you know, not for the study. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. Thanks, Alan. Okay, um, well, actually, this is 75. I have down in my notes. In 1973, I was here at that time, but when I remember the meetings, um, the student chapter of NYSAT was formed, modeling basically after the, the parent chapter, which was the New York State Association of Animal. Well, this one only has the animal technicians on. Okay, we can go. <laughs> um, so in 1975, students in the, of the student chapter of NYSAT held an open house in in Coulter Building. And I was a student at Cornell at that time. I remember driving down. I don't remember how I happened to hear about it, but I came, I remember driving down to come to the open house myself and one of my other classmates who went to Cornell also. Okay, next. Okay, just one picture of uh, the campus here. And the reason I put this one in was towards the late seventies is when uh, construction on Farnsworth Hall got started. And right here, which is a maintenance building at the time, but that's where Farnsworth Hall is right now. So there's Farrell. We're right in here. We got two cursors. <laughs> okay. And there's Smith Hall. So this vacant area here is where Farnsworth Hall ended up. Next, please. Okay, why don't we skip the time one? All right. So important thing here is New York State licensing exam started, or it was uh set up in 1976. There was a written exam, as Eileen said. Um, you had to pass the written exam and then you could take the practical exam. Next, please. And just some faculty here. Um, Dan Walsh, Ken Pyle, Ryan Cummings, Rick Ladwig, Richard Scranton. Jane Weaver actually was a classmate of Eileen and mine and Joan Rogers is on there somewhere too. She's our classmate. Next. Okay, so. First written exam was given in 1977. Those are my grades for the written exam. Grades don't matter, I passed. So <laughs> it said down here on the very bottom, um, if you passed, then you're scheduled for the practical exam, which happened to be June 29th, 1978. Next. Okay, um, Dr. Pettit, Jan Salton came in at that point, and that's the writing arena down at the college farm. Unfortunately, the equine program is not here at Delhi anymore, and uh, I'm not sure what they're, I think they're using that for just equipment storage at this point, but it was a, a really nice facility when it was in use for the uh, equine program. Next, please. All right, practical exam. So our hands-on practical was like a, uh, it was like an alumni reunion. I can remember all of us getting together, seeing people, but again, you had to Pass the written exam, then you took the practical exam, and as you can see, they didn't give us a grade, they just gave us a pass. And down there on the bottom, it says, if you have passed the examination, your registration certificate is enclosed. We extend every good wish for your success in the chosen profession. Okay. Now, AVMA actually started to accept vet techs at their meeting with continuing education seminars for the veterinary technicians. That's my first registration certificate. Um, so as Eileen mentioned, we were animal health technicians and there was about 300 um, licenses issued and I think they were alphabetical. So I was number 87. Eileen, I don't know whether you remember what your number is. You were probably lower than I am being your alf in alphabetically, you were lower. 
Oh, I absolutely know my number. It's 58. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember 87 since it was issued in 78. So, <laughs> okay, next, please. All right, 1979. This is from 1979. I think it may have started in 1978, but this is showing construction of Farnsworth Hall. $5 million agriculture and life sciences building. And when Dr. Meckel gets here in a little while, he'll talk about the cost of the renovation of Farnsworth Hall. Next, please. There's the completed project or product. Okay, annual AVMA convention, members of the ad hoc committee composed of representatives of USGIP. Okay, this is the start of NAFTA, basically. Um, National Association of Area Technicians in America. Uh, I don't have that right term wise, but anyhow. <laughs> And why don't we skip that, keep moving along. Some notable individuals who started at the school in 1981, the one, you know, second from the left there really isn't important, but anyhow. <laughs> okay, next. NAFTA um, adopts its official journal, the Compendium. I remember that being a very great journal to look for for inf reference information. Um, I got a lot of pictures of the anatomy lab. Of course, that was my home base. So pulled these out, but actually these came out of the yearbooks, uh, but you can see the dog kennels there. So that's inside of Farnsworth Hall. Got some others of those coming up. Next, please. All right, same thing. I can't, looks like eyeballs. Maybe they're studying there. Next, oh, Dr. Chambliss is down there in the lower corner and Dr. Chambliss is with us, or at least he was in the beginning. I hope I haven't bored you to death. So you're sleeping, Mel. Next. Still here, Alan. All right. <laughs> okay, so NAFTA adopts the National Code of Ethics for Veterinary Technicians. So the Code of Ethics is there in the lower left um, and something we'll talk about. Uh, we have a pinning ceremony now every year and we have the students um, recite the veterinary technician's oath at the pinning ceremony. Next, please. All right, 1984. Yeah, we are up to 1984. Okay. Um, Professor Ken Pyle started the primate colony here in Farnsworth Hall. There was a facility already set up for the primates when the building was built. Um, but through grants and donations of animals and uh, equipment, Ken set up the um, primate facility, which still is really the only one, as far as I know, it's the only two-year school, um, and again, for veterinary technicians, where they get hands-on experience working with the primates. And Terry, how many do we have right now? Eight, nine? <laughs> Eight. Eight, okay. So it started with six. There were two African green monkeys, and oh, go to the next page, please. Okay. Um, there were two African green monkeys when it started and four cinemologous monkeys. The ones that you see there are cinemologous or long-tailed macaques, or sometimes they're called crab-eating macaques. Um, but it's a very hands-on um, uh, course program. That, that's an elective course. It's not required. There have been four monkeys born in the facility. The first one was Boo Boo. So you can guess why that was named Boo Boo. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the last one we had was Violet, and Violet, I guess, is the flower of the 50th anniversary. Violet was born in 2011 when we were celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary. So this happens to be Monique, who was born in 2006. Next, please. Okay, Ellen, are you with us? Okay, Ellen was going to, is a graduate from 1984 and was going to talk to us about her experience. I remember Ellen well, she was always cheery, but uh, she graduated in 1984. She gave me a little blurb here to say about her. She spent two years in private practice, then 17 years in medical research. Um, she became a, a licensed massage therapist when I was reading through this. Do you do any massage on animals? And she, you're legally able to do that because you've got your LVT also. Okay, and now most of her animal experience is raising chickens and turkeys in their backyard. I think that's, if I re read that correctly. So yes, you do. Ellen's going to give us a little bit of a Hearst perspective on the program in the mid-80s. 
Well, going to Delhi was really the only option for me. Canton did not feel very homey and there was no way I was going near New York City. But I love the mountains and I love the feel of the community. It just felt like a good place to be home away from home. The VETSI program was fantastic. You got a great general view and you could specialize. I chose to specialize in small animal. I would have loved to have done more large animal work, but there just isn't the support for that in the area where I knew I was coming home to. It would have been helpful to do more research animal uh, classes, but that's beside the point. I did very well, and especially my first research job was working, started working with frogs. So we didn't have those at Delhi, at least not in the labs. Uh, being at Delhi was a lot of fun. My first two roommates were both named Helen. I was the infamous Helen, Helen and Ellen room. Answering the phone, oh, it was a riot. Answering the phone was my job because I got to screen the boys and did they want to talk to Helen or Ellen? And well, it was Helen, well, which one? And they'd give their last names and they had no idea. So they go, blonde or brunette? <laughs> so I, I had a lot of fun with that. I had a lot of fun. BC Cummings was really, really a cool guy. He could be, he was a brutal teacher. He wanted, he saw his job is weeding out the people who didn't have the, well, it's not easy to hold puppies to be put to sleep. And he wanted to weed out people who wouldn't be able to do that. And he did that well. We had some sort of a there was some sort of a big event and we were doing a veterinary science skit and I got to portray Dr. Cummings, which was, which was quite fun. And apparently I did a good job. I even had a, a brown cardigan sweater that I wore that day for that event. Um, I had my special place up behind the hill where I used to go and sit sometimes. I met the father of my kids at Delhi. Uh, he, he had been a, uh, Peter Brunschweiger had been an engineering student. And he, had, he went on. I didn't pursue any further education. I, I would love to have done histology through Cobleskill, but living on campus and living at Cobleskill was required for that. And that wasn't something I was interested in. Uh, I've heard professionalism mentioned and flexibility mentioned, and all of that is wonderful. Um, I, I was able to help integrate new techniques from other laboratories into our lab. We didn't have the fancy dishwashing equipment they did, but I managed to put it together and get things going that we were actually, um, we were culturing, bleh, culturing myelinating nerves from spinal roots of fetal mice. And I got that going. And in six weeks, we were reliably getting myelinating cultures. So that was really cool. I would, I would have liked to have stayed in research, but the it's, it's such a long drive. I've become addicted to B-Shift. If I could find a research job in B-Shift, I'd probably go after it. But I've got an hour and a half drive to get to the nearest, well, get to the U of R anyway. But I love Delhi. I love the campus. Um, I love the town. It was a wonderful place to be. The education was fantastic and has served me very, very well. Um, it also serves going to the doctor. Because I can look at the doctors and say, no, I'm a former veterinary technician. I have 17 years in medical research. And then they listen. Or at least they don't mock me when I start talking. And a very cool thing that I learned in Farm Animal Lab was when they taught you how to handle the casting ropes, you, you stretch it out, fold it double, wrap it up so you hang it from itself. Works great with electrical cords. It's really, <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> But it was fantastic, and I would do it all over again. And I thank you all, and this has been a lot of fun to watch. Thank you. Oh, the things we remember, huh? Yeah, oh, well. I, yeah. I haven't seen you since 1984, so. Thank I have. I came a few years ago, and I saw you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just not very memorable. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So, 1985. Animal Technician Testing Committee took over from, uh, or excuse me, yeah, Animal Technician Testing Committee uh, generated the Animal Technician National Exam, okay, in conjunction with uh, Professional Education Service, excuse me. Okay, so this is the start basically of the national exam, which is 
really use today, rather than the states giving their own exam. Oh, that's the one I was thinking of. This the association changed its name from animal technician educators to the Association of Veterinary Technician Educators, really the start of um, our present title. Next, please. Okay, just some pictures here. First animal and technician national exam, Maine started to use it. Got a note in there about um, when New York stopped. Okay, nice set. Now the, the right hand one for a long time, the. The motto at Delhi was where experience counts. And that was something I know it was even mentioned last night at the awards dinner, um, experiential teaching, giving the students the experience, but also um, the experience of the people coming in to teach was important. So for instance, uh, well, at least by the time I came back in 94, I had about 23 years of experience working in various areas within the profession. Um, so that was very important, bringing that experience for the students. Next, please. Okay, 1988, AVMA votes no to a resolution that would change terminology from animal technician to veterinary technician. Um, NISAT, I didn't mention much about NISAT, but usually NISAT is the largest club on campus because the veterinary technology program is not, if it's not the largest, it's one of the largest programs on campus and it is considered a, a club, so it gets funding through the student activities. Next, please. All right, now, 1989, you just heard what I said at 1988. Okay, AVMA House of Delegates approves the use of the term veteran technician. So the, everything has to now change names. So KTAT, which is an animal technician, changes to Committee on Veterinary Technician Education Activities. Animal Technician Testing Committee becomes the Veterinary Technician Testing Committee, and so on, okay. And the Veterinary Technician, well, the Animal Technician National Exam becomes the, v, the VTNE or Veterinary Technician National Exam which uses the same term um, now. Okay, NAVTA produces the world of the veterinary technician. That videotape was not virtual. I had that tape still in my office. <laughs> so <laughs> now all I have to do is find a video, uh, VCR that I can play it on. I think I do have one buried in the cellar at home. And it also at the same time, so that was um, promoting the profession and the education of veterinary technicians. Um, at the same time, ALAS, produces um, the challenge to care, okay, careers in laboratory animal science. Now, one thing to take note of too is anatomy lab, we had a little bit of everything, I like that. Mm -hmm. Tongues tape is my, my handwriting there, so. <laughs> okay, next. Oh, so somebody needs to mute. Is that you, Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited though. Okay. 1991, New York State administered the last vet tech licensing practical exam. Um, actually, for the last two years that that was administered, I had left Delhi in 1985. They let me be one of the uh, testers, so um, I enjoyed doing that. Down at the bottom is Dominic Morales. Um, for a while, the uh, veterinary technology program and the plant science program here on campus were combined into one department. So it was the animal and plant science department and Dominic, who worked in plant sciences, was the department chair and actually then became dean for, for quite a few years. Next, please. Uh, let's go, okay. Anybody who remembers Manley, his office was notorious, but <laughs> I, I sort of emulated Manley in my office. So it's taken me a while, although it's been nine months since I retired, my office is still not cleaned out yet. But anyhow. Now to executive board declares the third week in October to be National Vet Tech Week. Okay, next please. Okay, um, veterinary technician specialties. NAVTA certifies, I think at this point, there are 16 different specialties that people can um, qualify for. Um, veterinary technician specialties, okay? Everything from dentistry to clinical pathology, and I. Well, I haven't introduced Terry yet. We have Terry here, who's a uh, vet tech specialist in clinical pathology. Um, what they say, dentistry, there's emergency care. I forget what all the others are and I don't want to spend the time going over it. So, all right. So these are changes that really are still in effect. The American Association of Veterinary State Boards has now replaced the AVMA in the oversight of the VTNE. Um, 
let's see anything. Okay, AVMA accredits the first um, distance learning program, or virtual program at St. Petersburg College. And okay, so the first provisional specialty was in emergency and critical care. Next, please. All right, so this is from the 1994 um, yearbook. And the one person I wanted to take note of here, Sharon Ferrara was a well-liked, I didn't know her, but she was a well-liked um, ISA instructional support associate for a few years and in, in the fall of 1993, she unfortunately at the age of 30 died of cancer. Okay, next please. Okay, NYSAT actually, as of 1991, NYSAT did change its name from the New York State Association of Animal Health Technicians to New York State Association of Vet Techs. And you'll hear people who didn't know it as NYSAT say NYSAVIT. I've never gotten used to that one, but um, it's both the state organization and the uh, student chapter now go by veterinary technician. Okay, we are approaching the end of the millennium. All right, now, I don't think he's in that, nope, next one. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, the Zeta Delta Tau. Um, Zeta Delta Tau, excuse me. I'm not usually much for promoting the Greeks, although I know there's some good Greek societies there. Uh, Zeta Delta Tau, Tau was a sorority which was started by a group of women uh, vet tech students because they wanted to have a place. It was promoted as a, an academic and community service sorority. And really they were good students. They wanted to have, I think, a place where they could go and study and not have the problems associated with noisy dorms and that kind of thing. And it's, it's almost like a precursor to what we started with the living and learning program a few years after that. So that's the reason I put that in there. Next, please. Okay, um, 1997, actually it was the fall of 1996. Yeah, that's me. Okay, I took a group of students out one Friday afternoon and we dug up a horse. It was like an archeological dig. And that's what we were doing over here on the right side. And that was our, um, what do I wanna say? Posing with some of the contraband <laughs> that we uh, found there. There's the horse skeleton. Now, if you go to the next slide, this picture was just taken last fall. And most of those bones that you see laid out there on the table are from that, that time when we dug up the horse. Those bones have been used for almost 25 years now. And uh, they, it's been a great addition to the anatomy lab, uh, lab specimens. Next. Okay, a little bit different way in 98 that they listed the faculty. They didn't show any pictures, they just gave names, okay. Um, I wish we had a color picture here. That college farm sign was really colorful one. Um, next. We tried to find something for each year. And so we're just to put some fillers in. Okay, in the fall of 1999, um, the VETSI program, Residence Life and the Counseling Center started what was called the V-STEP program. And one floor of Du Bois Hall was set aside for first year women VETSI students. Okay, and within there, there was two second year uh, VETSI students who were selected to be peer mentors. The RA that was on that floor was a vet size student. Um, it was considered a 24 hour quiet floor, which didn't mean it was like a morgue like necessarily all the time, but they were supposed to respect their uh, neighbors so that anybody could study at any time or sleep or whatever was needed. And there was also what we called the peer mentor room or resource room. It was a study room. And so there were specimens in there, there were microscopes and other materials that the students could, could uh, use for studying. And the peer mentors actually manned that room. So they were there to help those students living in the living and learning program. You see, we called it the V-STEP program, veterinary science technology. Um, well, the first year residential missed out in the letters, but experience program. Uh, but it was a very successful program and it is still going on. And these are some shots from that, um, from the resource room, from the peer mentor room. Now here on the right-hand side, those were our first two peer mentors. And we're now going to hear from Kristen, Dr. Kristen Fratamico. Hi there, how are you? Uh, very good, how are you? I'm now, here's something everybody has to remember. Um, I sent Kristen an email message about doing this. She sent my wife a message 
saying, have Alan give me a call. So I called her up. This was, I think, about 10 days ago. And she goes, yeah, I want to do this. But I'm giving birth on the 15th. <laughs> so where's the baby? <laughs> the baby's sleeping with grandma, I think, at the moment. Okay. All right. So um, Kristen, as I said, she was one of our first peer mentors after graduating from Delhi. Correct me on any of these. Um, she got her bachelor's degree at Cornell. She went to vet school at Ross University in St. Kitts. Um, she practices now in uh, Middletown, Connecticut, or I forget when, where, you're, you're around Hartford anyway, in Connecticut. And she was instrumental in starting a vet tech program at Middlesex Community College. Is that correct, title? It is. Okay. Yeah, that's some, some of my little navigation throughout my 21 years since I guess I've been at Delhi, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to you and you can tell about your experience. Thank you so much, Alan. I really appreciate this. I definitely don't hold my weight, unfortunately, in um, alumni participation, which I'm not very proud of, but um, I really, really did, did appreciate the call. It does mean a lot to me to be part of things like this. And I have kind of navigated life through the trenches for sure. I've um, you know, been married and had babies and just had my third baby, like Alan said, just a, just a, a, over a week ago. So we're, we're busy and happy and having a lot of fun at the same time. But thank you so much, Alan, for thinking of me and, and giving me a call and I'm happy to be here. Um, as far as when I was exploring colleges, probably back in 90, 97, 96, 97 area, I remember my dad and I taking the time to um, visit multiple campuses. And I, you know, multiple schools that I was accepted to, and we would take the time to go to open houses and other events that they had to, um, for, for prospective students. And by the time we visited Delhi for one of those open houses, I remember telling my dad and saying, I just don't want to go or visit anywhere else. I just had a good feeling about the campus and enjoyed you know, every minute of it while I was visiting and enjoyed every second of the two years that I was there. Um, and I told him, I said, this is, this is where I wanna go. I don't need to go or visit any other colleges. And he always said, you know, you better sleep on it. Are you sure? And I said, I'm absolutely sure. So, so that's what brought me to Delhi. I always knew from a pretty young age that I wanted to do something in an animal related field. And so to, to say that Delhi kind of set that foundation for me truly is um, an understatement for sure. Um, it's, you know, def going to Delhi, I would say it was, you know, pretty life altering. I, um, you know, it, it affected my career choices along the way. Um, it helped me navigate, you know, you know, how I, you know, wanted to um, pursue, you know, my career. It, it helped me kind of learn to balance, you know, life as a college student and just to have a good time as college students should have because it's just a, a once in a lifetime experience. Um, and also just to balance, you know, where, you know, being successful academically, um, getting involved. I, you know, definitely always, um, you know, advise prospective students, you know, just to seek out what's out there and just to get involved whenever possible. Um, but extracurricular activities back when I was there, you know, getting involved in the NYSAC clubs and other various clubs, going on field trips to the Toronto Zoo. I remember, um, my goodness, other types of field trips um, to different, um, you know, conferences. Um, I, where else did we go? Goodness. Um, get, you know, getting involved in some special studies courses. Um, and so I remember working with Alan at the time, just revising or refining what was um, the anatomy and physiology lab manual. And he actually made that a credit course for me, which was awesome. And then, you know, and then remember being asked to uh, serve as the very first of two students to um, participate in that B-STEP peer mentoring program. And I was hesitant because I felt like I had so much on my plate already with, you know, academics and just the other things that I was doing. Um, but I think it was Alan who tried to convince me 
And I finally said yes, and I'm so glad that I did because that just was such a fantastic experience. And I think being a peer mentor for um, you know first year veterinary science students, being able to tutor them and teach them and being available to them um, really did solidify my love for teaching, which you know to this day I still still love to, um, to do. Oh my goodness. So that was probably the, the biggest things for me as far as, you know, what I did in, in um, you know, helping students involve those study habits and, you know, helping them, you know, be successful their first year in college. And that really did mean a lot. Um, and then that kind of brought me to my more current experiences, like Alan mentioned, um, you know, after get graduating veterinary school, you know, really wanted to um, you know, continue to teach in some way. So I did navigate through several uh, vet tech programs from Minnesota, where I completed my um, vet tech, my veterinary learning and completed my clinical training, and stayed out in Minnesota and got involved in some in a veterinary uh, technician program out there. And that was one of my very first jobs as a veterinarian was teaching uh, anatomy and physiology uh, to those students back then. And then more currently, you know, building and, and um, helping to uh, start the current vet tech program that we have here at Middlesex College in Connecticut, where I'm currently living. And then now where I work, you know, it's a small, um, a small three, three to four doctor um, primary care, you know, small animal general medicine hospital, um, but we do see multiple uh, vet tech, vet vet student, vet tech student, um, veterinary assistant students, and, you know, coming in and circulating in throughout the year for externships. And it takes me back to um, my own experiences, you know, and I, you know, when they are mentored, you know, when I have the opportunity to talk to them, there's not one time, you know, where uh, something about Delhi comes up. So I always, you know, revert back to my experience at Delhi and, and share stories with them, which is a lot of fun. But thank you so much. I really do appreciate being here. I had a wonderful, um, wonderful two years at Delhi. Alan was an, an instrumental mentor to me, you know, throughout that time. So I'm so happy to be here to help with this and to see you. <laughs> Good seeing you. So thank you. Good luck with the new baby and the rest of the family. And you're another one who didn't even mention about oh. <laughs> your husband graduated from the program also. So yes. Yes, I've met my husband at Delhi as well, I guess. And that's that's what Nick says. Um, his his um, best experience at Delhi, I guess, was meeting me. So it was meant to be. We have three beautiful children, and we've been together now for 21 years, which is more time together than apart. So, which is um, pretty crazy. Can I just can I just jump in for one second and say thank you so much that I wasn't the only one that forgot to mention that I met my husband at Delhi. <laughs> and, uh, and we have three beautiful children as well. And I can just double my time. We've been married 42 years. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kristen. It's a, it's a Look forward to seeing note. you sometime. Okay, so moving on with 2000, picture of the uh, faculty there and so on, along with a monkey. Okay, International Veterinary Nurses and Technicians Association. One of the things we'll find shortly, um, in Europe, the term veterinary nurse is more common, and I think it is the main one, um, rather than veterinary technician. Next, please. <laughs> 